Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for a very spontaneous adventure slash challenge to head in my Porsche Taycan for my first electric car road trip all the way to Munich, nearly 800 miles, 1,250 kilometers to get to a meeting tomorrow. Now I figured given I was going, I could just fly, that would be easy. But last night I was here at the Museum thinking, I've not yet taken this over to Germany. I've not yet gone on a massive adventure having to manage with the EV charging infrastructure. So let's give this a go and see how it's going to turn out. Now today we're gonna to be heading across the Euro tunnel over to France, then onwards tomorrow in this video over to Munich. It is going to need a few charge ups given the total range on this car from my experience is about 200 miles in the Taycan Turbo S. So I'm gonna be relying upon the public charging infrastructure and seeing what we can manage along the way. It would be significantly easier to take literally any of the other cars from the collection. It is a long drive, 13 hours drive time from London to Munich, and it would have just been a fill up or two along the way, but I figured I'd make this a little bit more complicated. Now the Schmiemobiles are not unfamiliar with road trips. Pretty much all of them have been abroad with the exceptions of the Clio. That'll make for an interesting adventure at some point. The M3 will have to do soon. The C63 Black Series will head over at some point. The GR Yaris, of course the G T Black Series when it's back from its free spray, and notably, the Taycan. Now I've been thinking about this for a while, what it would be like to take this on a journey abroad. And yesterday I was here at the Museum and I thought, why don't we just go for it? Why don't we just head away and see what happens? Now I've come in with the Taycan. It is currently charging back up. It was down to 83%, but I'd like to start obviously on 100%. So it's plugged into the SeaTac Charge Storm Connected 2. We've got our new bespoke chargers AMG GTR wheel there mounted as the cable tidy. And I guess we'll be up a few percent. Let's see how the progress is going at the moment. Press the button just here, up to 86%. So we'll get this up to 100% and head off about lunchtime. Now I spent a little bit of time trying to work out how to go about this, but I won't lie, I am massively underprepared. We'll have to see what happens. I figure we're going to have a series of different charging stops along the way. The maximum range realistically that I get from the Taycan Turbo S is about 200 miles. So there is a charger at the Euro tunnel. There's one just the other side. I've got one or two more planned in France. We'll have a night stop along the way. Then we get into Germany, one or two more, and finally to Munich. We're gonna to have to see exactly how this goes. Join me for the adventure whether we're gonna run out somewhere along the way, whether we'll have any problems with the charging infrastructure, or whether this is going to be a complete blissful dream, you'll find out with me. So we need to get set up then before we get this out and get this crazy EV journey started. Fast forward a little bit and we now have the solid blue light, which means we should have 100% charge in the Taycan, ready to rock and roll. And it's gonna be quite the challenge and game to work out when best to do this on the road. Yes, I can see through the window, 100%, 214 miles in theory. We'll be testing that range today across a number of different charge ups. To disconnect it, press the button just here, wait a second, pull that out, and then we can store it away over the top of the wheel we have here, which is absolutely lovely. A very nice way to be able to mix the traditional petrol head element and AMG wheel with the EV charging. So let us take a seat on board then, get ready to begin this marathon voyage to find out today what's gonna to be happening with this and how well we can manage. The only thing is that I've not yet done anything about this. We still have the crack in the windscreen glass, so we're gonna to have to put up with that during the journey, unfortunately. Nonetheless, let's get ready to go. Our first port of call then is to cruise around the M25, London's Ring Road motorway. We are taking it easy, it is a beautiful day, but I'm driving it today basically like I'm in a petrol car. I'm not putting the car into range mode. I want the air conditioning on, I want to have the acceleration. I will go onto the cruise control and let it roll, 97%. But basically this is jumping in at the deep end, to see what happens, because the idea here for everyone to move towards electric cars 
means that it needs to be approachable. It can't be too complicated. And obviously this is a world that's quickly changing. The infrastructure is improving very fast. New charging stations are being built. But my experiences with this car last year led me a number of times at the rapid chargers to having issues, to not finding access to them. They were out of order, to have to queue for ages. And obviously things like that are going to put a significant spanner in the works of what we're trying to do today. So we've got about an hour and a half from where we started out to get over towards the Euro Tunnel. We'll try and do a charge up, although I'm not entirely sure what the chargers at the Euro Tunnel are actually like. However, there is a rapid charger from Ionity and Porsche are part of the teams behind Ionity that we will try at the other side if we don't. But otherwise, I've picked out a few kind of key stops that we're gonna to go to today. Obviously, when it comes to charging, I say obviously, a lot of people might not know this, but you get the fastest charging speeds when you're at the lowest percentage. So you have to go against your instincts to run this down as close as you can to zero to charge as quickly as possible. Above about 52%, you don't get the full speeds. So we're gonna to have to see how that goes a little bit today as we make our progress through. But obviously things like meal stops, food stops, and any hanging out time on a beautiful day like this, we need to do at the time we're charging. We don't want any stops where the car is not charging because that would be desperately inefficient. And we're going for what is seven and a half hours on Google Maps today, having started at lunchtime. So this has the potential to be a very long evening. And that's obviously before charge time and before waiting at the Euro Tunnel. Plus we have another six hours or so to do tomorrow, later in this video. This is the beginning though. We're gonna see how all of this is going to turn out very shortly. I'm not gonna to go too much into this, but we are now at 75%. So we have used a quarter of our range. And at this point we've gone 58 miles. So it's at 214 earlier, which would be about 53, 54 miles for the first quarter. We're doing slightly better, but 200 is really the stretch for what you can do on a full charge. So that's where this is gonna become a bit of a game and a bit of a calculation as we go. Now I'm thinking it's probably not hugely worthwhile to charge at the Euro Tunnel because of it being faster if we go to the Ionity the other side, except I want to see how it works at the Euro Tunnel. So we might try it for like five minutes, 10 minutes, just to get a feel for what the options are and then go to the Flexi Plus Lounge and then do the crossing, but basically going with the flow. We're doing all right then. We're just pulling in here, the Channel Tunnel exit off the M20 down towards Dover here at Folkestone. We're actually hours ahead of our booked crossing. Of course, I've done this with a little bit of charging time, so we'll see, maybe we'll probably end up getting an earlier train, which gives us more time on the other side to actually go and charge it up. But good progress, to be honest. Lovely day for a drive. We're arriving at the terminal, and this is where normally we actually go the other way, because we always book Flexi Plus to have the freedom of whichever train we want. And I know where the Tesla superchargers are, and I think at this side they have regular electric car chargers. I know at Flexi Plus, it's only the Tesla chargers, which obviously is slightly inconvenient for today. But I think if we go around, we will be able to find what we are looking for. In fact, is that it right next to, yeah, here we go, right next to the Tesla chargers. That would make sense with infrastructure terms. Not very many of them in comparison though. Pulling up and this is where the camera at the front really helps so that we can get as close as possible. There we go, right. 59% at the moment, so we're not going to be into the fastest of fast charging, but let's go give this a whirl and see what we can do. This is a bit of a dance with cables, to be honest. Combo DC, we need one of these. This is always the kind of slightly annoying bit, but that's what we need. I don't know if these are charging or if these are free or what they are exactly, but that goes in there. Oddly, it stopped working after about a minute. No, we're still working, we're still working. But if we come to the car, that's not charging. That's current charge state. Oh, this is the bane of EV life. So we're at an interesting start. Uh, this is the, do you know one of the other things is, obviously today's beautiful weather, but normally in the UK, the weather is not so beautiful and chargers never have canopies like petrol stations, never. What is going on here? Get that out. Round two, oh, the uh, EV naysayers will be loving this start, I'm sure. 0 0.6 kilowatt hours. That wasn't a great start, was it? Okay, DC combo unavailable. Why is it unavailable? Now it's available. Go, that one. At least it's in English now. Start. Start. Connect. Hmm. 
<laughs> it's still not charging. Ladies and gentlemen, we're off to a fantastic start. Absolutely brilliant. Just what we wanted. Look at this, red light. Red light is warning. Do you know what? Charging stop one, fail. Right, we're moving, let's try the other space. This is so annoying, I've parked very diagonally, but it is what it is. Let's try this one. Let's see if I have any luck. This is a slightly different thing, actually. Come on, open up. Magic. This is going to be a long day at this rate. A very, very long day. <laughs> Screen's totally dead. <laughs> have any words to say that's dead that one doesn't work we're going after that little misfortunate scenario i'd completely forgotten there aren't actually tesla chargers anymore at the lounge either but we popped in grabbed some snacks and now we're immediately boarding a train so this is the first train after we've got here so at this moment in time we haven't lost anything by trying to charge and thankfully we have at the moment 127 miles to go and i know there's this charger 74 miles over the other side so we're going to set the nav straight to that one and fingers are crossed it's slightly better over on the other side than it is on this side we're gonna see <laughs> this is the start of a very very anxious anxiety inducing adventure silently into the train we go this is the first time i've taken the euro tunnel i think i'm correct in saying in an electric car we're now on the other side and i've actually just popped the car into kilometers which is going to get very confusing we had driven 95 miles 153 kilometers so far and i was slightly off because it's 70 odd kilometers to the next one 40 something miles or so in total but here we are beautiful over on the french side as well thank you to the team here as always and for the first time we're on the continent in a schmimobile ev heading straight to the ionity charger in Reli, I guess you pronounce it. I'm probably wrong, but we'll go find out how that works. And there we have the sign, welcome to France. So far on the auto routes, it has been plain sailing, but we're pulling in now to the first services where there is an Ionity charger. Now this is the first time I have ever in my life, I think, charged an electric car outside of the UK. I'm hoping that there aren't gonna be any issues with payment with the Taycan charging card, I'm just trying to work out where to go and how well signed this might or might not be. Which way do we go? Do we follow the signs to the petrol pumps and hope that we can work it out? One thing that I guess we do lack by not having to stop right here to do petrol is to find the stuff to clean the windscreen, which on a long haul across Europe is always quite a funny one because you pick up a lot of bugs splattered all across it. But in theory, going past not the tyre inflator. There we go, I can see the machines tucked in over there. I'm really hoping that this is going to work because obviously after our little struggles earlier, it would be less than ideal if we can't charge here. We do have 115 kilometres of range left. We have driven so far 216 kilometres. So we're not doing too badly and we need to make sure we can get the i think it's about uh 200 kilometers from here just over 200 kilometers to the next one so we don't need to charge up a whole lot like i said you want to get it empty at each one we've driven 218 kilometers so far 34 percent battery left let's go charge up okay then so i'm gonna have to squeeze around to your side this is quite expensive if you have to pay full whack, but as a Taycan customer, you get discounted rates for the first period. You always have to kind of jingle around and work out how to kind of do this. And again, this is going to be a bit of a stretch as well to plug it in, but let's do that. Is it going to have to balance on the bodywork? No, nope, we're just off, thankfully. Let's see if it starts immediately though, or if it's going to be a a nightmare headache welcome connect okay preparing to charge setting up communication with the car Ooh, 144 kilowatts we like that that's going to deliver a lot very quickly 
So far, so good. We're now up to 66%. It's gone up 32% in just under 13 minutes. As expected, we are now charging just over 100 kilowatts, but that's not all that bad. That's how long you probably would take to fill up your petrol car, go in and pay, faff around a little bit, and very shortly we'll get back on the road because the plan is to just charge it enough to get to the next charging station, which is just over 200 kilometers away. So maybe we'll go up to about 75%, 80% to be safe rather than sorry, just in case we have any troubles. But this is moving along very very nicely, it has to be said. We've just hit 80%. I am gonna click stop. It starts slowing down a little bit more from this point. Machine has stopped whirring away. Bit of an obstacle course, jungle gym to try and get through there. Hit the button, unplug this, it will close itself. Work out how to tidily put this back on the uh, bracket there, he says. There we go, right, ready to go. It automatically, by the way, dipped the headlights it knows we're in france so it did that automatically it also brought up it doesn't show it anymore but it brought up something that told us when we arrived in france what the speed limits are here in france i thought that was all very clever but i suppose you expect that from the new technology anyway we've got a range of 272 we've got 10 kilometers sorry 210 kilometers to our next stop a very convenient thing to do when you're going on a big trip through france as you get to these the telepiages is to have prepared in advance and have one of these little thingies that normally you would attach to your windshield and it would let you blip and go straight through but this car has effectively acoustic glass oops wrong window which means that in this case it can't actually see it through the window you have to hold it outside but at least you don't have to stop this way it just bleeps and lets you through and life is pretty easy when it comes to comes to these things one thing that is oh still got the window open nice buffeting one thing that surprised me a little bit is that when we set off from the last stop we had about 50 kilometers more range than we needed to the destination those numbers are now about 19 kilometers different which is obviously not ideal um we're going to get to the stop, I guess, if it keeps going down a little bit more, with about 17 kilometres to empty, to empty, to zero. We're on the 10% at the moment. We've got the warning triangle as well to let us know. And the other thing that's a bit irritating is about this stop that we're actually going to, because it's not directly on this auto route. It's about four kilometres off on another one. The problem is that we go the four kilometres there, but the next turnaround point is actually another 21 kilometres along. So unless we can find a sneaky loop somehow, we're going to waste about 20, 25 minutes in total, or 25, maybe even 30 minutes driving in the wrong direction to charge up and then obviously deplete. That's about a fifth of a full charge lost almost immediately thereafter. These are the small things that just add up and make it all take a little bit longer. But let's hope that it's actually working when we do get there, because otherwise we're going to have a much bigger problem. Let's go find some EV chargers. Oh, they're just there. Nice and easy on the left. That's not far to go at all, except I have to do some kind of funny loop to get round to get there. We'll actually use this as our dinner stop, because that's one of the things, obviously, whether you're in a petrol car or an EV, you're still going to stop at some point for food and a chill. Oh gosh, this is unpleasant. Um, don't want to catch the wheels. So that's going to happen now as we're on 7% with 21 kilometers to zero. So we will pull in, we'll take the end one and um, get this plugged in. Let's bring this around, come this way. Oh, maybe I can use the post to my advantage here to make sure it doesn't get in the way too much. Plug that in there, feels a bit twisted. Maybe that's being pulled a little bit tight. All the way around the back. Connection okay. Tap the card. Have to be, has to be said that we have not had issues with the chargers on this side of the channel yet at all. As soon as it establishes a connection, this is always that like moment of waiting. It's like waiting for the petrol pump to be authorized by the person inside. But look, here we go, 7%. Let's get it rocking and rolling. In a second, we'll see what speed it's gonna go. But given it's quite so low, we should be able to get this up. Yeah, look at that, 240 kilowatts. The lower it is, the faster it charges, but 240 kilowatts is some serious speed. We just need to get it now to like 90, 95%. So that's probably gonna take 40 minutes or something like that. We'll see, for now, we'll head inside. 
When in France, eat a croque monsieur, we've just come back outside and basically it's on 83% in 23 minutes. That was on 7%. Now I did check on the app, it went from seven to 70 in about 13 or 14 minutes. I can see on the phone app from the Porsche Connect app what the car is doing. And also while we're here, look at the sky, it's crazy very very pink and orange and mad and lovely now it says inside the car at the moment that 83 percent is good for about 265 kilometers and given we know it's 235 because we've got to go in the wrong direction and come back again we're going to go up to about 95 percent so we will give it another 10 minutes or so which is probably about how long it's going to take me to finish eating and just pop inside maybe use the facilities or whatever anyway and this is when if you just plan it out it's super convenient, very easy. Obviously the charging speed has gone right down to 42 kilowatts now from about 250 earlier. So that's much, much slower. But the end result is actually more efficient than you think it is. And props to France and Ionity, because these have all worked really quite well so far. The good news is we've now got 300 kilometers of range and it's still going over 50 kilowatts. And we've just hit 95%, which I think is my cue to go and unplug it. As you can see, it's already down into the 40s. It slows down very, very quickly. Oh, it's jumping around a lot very, very quickly when it gets to this. So I'm going to go and shut that off. We've got 60 or so kilometers extra range. That should be plenty. Let's hope. Look at this sunset. That is spectacular. That is a really, really pretty evening sky. Of course, we do have the next couple of hours in the dark. But not a bad view right now. Well, we haven't jumped very far ahead. We're actually now pulling in to the charger on the other side where we have more Ionities because we figured that we've now gone down 13%. We're down to 82%. And given we know it's going to be a stretch on the next leg, I'm trying to work out how best to park in these. We know it's going to be a stretch on the next leg. We figured we might as well do a 10 minute charge up here before we continue. Well, Less than 10 minutes of charging later, we're back in the car. We're now on 94%, which is pretty good, to be honest. And we've got about 100 kilometers more range than we have driving distance. So onwards we go. This is going to be a very long slog from here to the next charger, which is basically at our night stop hotel for this evening. We've made it to our checkpoint and conveniently for the night, there is a charging point, albeit not the fastest in the world. More on that in just a moment. Now, when we last charged the car, which was about two hours ago, it had a range that would get us here with hundred kilometers still to go. In reality, it's parked up now on 21% with a range of 59 kilometers. And this is something I've experienced with the Taycan. In your traditional car, it would normally update its estimated range based on how you're driving it. This always seems to default to the standard or whatever it's been set to. And in reality, when you're driving at the speed limit, like today, a long slog on the motorway at 130 kilometers an hour, the speed limit here in France, it depletes significantly quicker. And as it gets lower, it seems to go even faster. So you catch up on the range towards zero very, very quickly. And it can be a little bit concerning, which is why we did that extra top up earlier on. And still it's pretty low now that we've got here as well. Anyway, we are plugged in it is a seven kilowatt charger, which means it is going to take a fair while, probably won't even get to 100% overnight. But nonetheless, there is an Ionity right around the corner. So we'll top it up there before we continue and cross over towards Germany. But we've driven about 665 kilometers today. So around 400 miles or so and have nearly the same to go tomorrow morning to continue this and see how it is when we cross over into Germany as well. For now, we're going to take a break and continue in just a moment. Good morning and a very positive start to the day. We have a green light on the charger, which means I think we're going to have 100% on the dashboard. Let's have a quick look at what we've got here. Yep, 100%. That means we can rock and roll all the way, not having to do a charge up locally to get into Germany. So we've loaded up all of our bags. We need to pack away the charging cable, pop that back in the boot and then get immediately on the road. I think about 200 and a little bit kilometers from here to our next charging station across the border. Navigation is rocking and rolling. We are heading to Karlsruhe, 243 kilometers, it says. And one fun thing when I turn it back on is that it will automatically tell us dipped beam converted. It knows where we are. It knows that we're driving over on the other side of the channel. So all set. We did need 100% though to do that 240 or so kilometer drive i'm not sure what's going to happen when we get to the autobahn and whether driving at higher speeds is going to completely nuke the range 
by more than it would in a petrol car. That's what we're going to be finding out a little bit later on today. But for now, let us head straight on out. We have a long old drive and we need to get to Munich in time. We're slowing down then because just up ahead of us here is the border crossing into Germany. We're actually doing pretty well in terms of the range. We've made up a little bit of range, which is unusual. We are slightly off our route then, but contrary to expectations, we now have 77 kilometers still to empty, which is not exactly what I expected. Now we do have a few chargers here. I can see at least one that is vacant, which is obviously what we need. We could potentially have made it to the next one, but obviously we're here in Germany, which means Autobahn, and I probably want to put my foot down a little bit more. So we will give this a go, charge up enough that we can get to the next one without stress. And then from there, actually we don't need to give it too much, just enough to make it to the next one. Always this horrible moment. There we go, right. Let's go see if we can do this We're on 23%. Not bad going, really. Right. That one works fairly easily. Oh, this is the same system we actually have in the UK. I'm familiar with this interface. Connected okay. The fun thing is that I just tapped my Taycan charge card and that seems to have done the job on that one. Although it says charging is delayed until power is available. I don't quite know what that means. Until power is available, is power available? Why is power not available? We're literally next to a power station. It looks, power should be available. I'm slightly concerned, actually. Charging is delayed until power is available. I've not seen that one before. Typically, that one I tried a few times wasn't working. We moved the car to the other side, and now it is at least charging. This doesn't tell me how fast it's going, but if it's done basically one kilowatt hour in about half a minute, that's actually really fast. In fact, let me come through and have a quick look at what the car says it is doing inside here. Can we see? This is the usual, need to put it on the right screen. I don't know if there's a way to have it so it's always on that. That's quite decent. Speeds do we have, about 100 kilowatts. That'll do, we only need to get it a little bit more charged up. Maybe we'll get it to like 50%, 55%, 60%, something like that, before we continue from here, down the autobahn to the next fast one. Just had a little scare there that this wasn't gonna work. Slightly, slightly, slightly worried that there was gonna be a problem. We're up to about 52%, but this is how it's done. Clean the window simultaneously, eating an ice cream on a beautiful day. This water is very dirty and not very soapy, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually horrible. This is far from clean water. At least it's just glass. I'll do the best I can. Onwards to the next stop, which is only, I think about hundred kilometers away, 92 kilometers. So we're up to 62% after about 20 minutes or so. The windscreen could have been better. I'm not gonna lie, definitely some dirty watermarks all over it. Maybe we'll deal with that a little bit later. 64% we've got. Right, let's continue this and go find some autobahn. Almost immediately then, out onto the autobahn. So we'll turn this up into Sport Plus. We will get the electrical whirs inside here. I'm not quite sure how much of that you guys can hear. It also lowers the car slightly. It is a very odd sensation when you're listening to the sounds out of this. And we have a two-speed gearbox in the Taycan as well, which is why it's quite so fast off the line when you accelerate. This is looking pretty busy. We've just been circumventing the most monumental traffic jam. The Stuttgart area is always horrendous from traffic, but we are now on de-restricted autobahn, which means in this car, foot down and we take off. <laughs> 200 kilometers an hour, it's 124 miles per hour. And it's the instant torque, massive shove in the back. And I'm not sure what the top speed of this car actually is, but you probably don't take very long to get there. It is literally a case of, and I'm actually gonna do this fun way. On this screen, we can press home, and then we can press cockpit. And you get some of that information right in front of you as well. Foot down, the numbers build. Got a G-Wagon in front. <laughs> it is quite a fun feeling. And the sounds as well. Obviously when you're firm on the brakes, well even if you're not firm on the brakes, you have the regen taking place, charging up a bit of the battery. But because of going so slow through the traffic, we conserved a lot of charge. I think this is gonna deplete it just as quickly though, but that's what's gonna be interesting to see. Due to another bit of road that's closed, we're kind of on a narrow single track crossing over the highway to try and get to the charger on the other side. 
We've had a bit of bad luck with this, that the chargers we've wanted to go to have been really hard ones to access. So we're probably gonna be driving through a construction site. Yes, literally. They are hosing something. I wonder what they're hosing. This doesn't look good. Are they? I'm trying to work out what's going on here. There's a truck with a hose, but where we're trying to go is over there. That services, that has a, uh, another Ionity charger. <laughs> you shouldn't have to do this kind of work around. There should just be one everywhere. And that's, that's where all of this needs to get better for sure. It just has to get better at some point. Because at the moment it is, it's a challenge. It is playing a game to try and solve this problem. It is a thanks though to this gentleman who has kindly made it possible to get past. That's a tight squeeze in this car. Any narrow gap is a horribly unpleasant squeeze when you're in this thing. Uh, I guess we go to the right here, maybe? I don't know where we are or what we're doing. There are some charges and there are some more charges. We've got choices. We are spoiled for choice. Let's hope this one is all fast and efficient, but it looks a good one. It looks like it should be. To get to the next one is about 146 kilometers. We have to start going in the wrong direction, one junction, then turn around. At the moment, we are up to 59%. You'd think we need about 50% to do it. We've only been here for 10 minutes, 60% now. Give it a couple percent more, and then we'll get it unplugged back in the car and onwards. Another funny loop where we've had to come almost back on ourselves, but just over there, we have the Ionity chargers. They're actually quite busy, but thankfully there are two empty ones. So we can park it on in and go get it charged for the last time on this journey. The very last one on our way to Munich. This is quite fun watching the numbers going up. We're at about 245 kilowatts we've got there. We're down to 17%, but it's already put one kilowatt hour back into the car. This is moderately awesome actually to watch how fast it can charge it up. We will probably need to be here for a fair while though. We want to get this really quite full and we're actually a little bit early, believe it or not. So given we've got the time, we're going into Munich for an appointment and we're actually coming back out to here, I think, to charge on the way onwards from here. We've actually not got that far to go, less than 100 kilometers from here to our destination. So we might as well charge it up to nearly 100% to make our lives a little bit easier later on, given we've got the time relatively successful if i can say so myself we are done we got to 95 percent about half an hour or so in total to charge that up so we've got plenty to get onwards to our destination later on this obviously has been quite a few stops if we had a car with a longer range like even a taycan turbo or a taycan 4s or anything else for that matter this would have been even smoother but it has to be said that wasn't too painful anyway the last stretch now onwards into munich We've got a clear bit of road in front of us. This is just crazy actually how quickly it gets to 250 kilometers an hour, 255 there. 158 miles an hour, which must be close to the VMAX. It just picks up instantly. The acceleration is ridiculous. And obviously that's one of the big perks you could say of a 760 horsepower electric car because you have instant torque. The motor's four wheel drive, it's just hit the button, the pedal, and off you go. And yes, that's not the most efficient way to finish off the charge, but hey, we're getting towards the end and that's not particularly relevant at this stage. One interesting topic though is the cost of doing this because charging at the rapid chargers along the way is actually quite expensive. It's not much less than an equivalent powered combustion engine car would be. Now, I don't have the exact numbers, but it's certainly in the 50 to 75% region. It's not kind of a fraction of petrol. It's fairly hefty. And as I've said on videos before, that's before the additional taxes that will inevitably be introduced in the future to make up for the losses of revenue that's normally taxed on uh, fuel, on petrol, on diesel. So I don't know how all of that's going to evolve, but when you're driving a car like this, probably the biggest expense we could say is the depreciation on the car with the mileage not the charging so it's largely almost irrelevant foot goes back down fortunately not clear in front i just love the whir that you get this electrical buzz and excitement as we're now less than 50 kilometers from our destination i think we might get a completely empty stretch in just a moment this could be exciting looks like a very empty road up ahead so, foot down. Yeah, 
that's on the limiter. I say on the limiter, the speed is still increasing, but I felt like a maximum. Yeah, that's the absolute maximum. We have VMAX, 269. Now we get a little bit downhill. Will we see 270? No, 269 kilometers per hour pinned on the VMAX of the Taycan Turbo S, which is quite interesting. So that is about 167 miles an hour, I want to say. And it's quite quiet at that speed as well, with the acoustic glass, with all of the insulation. And now back at 140, it feels near on silent. Lovely. What a car. What a car to do the drive in. And thankfully, not too much of a chaotic journey. If there was any doubt about whether we had actually made it to Munich, we're having a quick flyby visit here at the BMW belt. BMW World, we're actually collected the M5 a couple of years ago now. You've got the museum, you've got the dealership and everything else and the handover center all inside this spectacular building. And then just a little bit further ahead of us is where BMW Classic are based and they have some of their obscenely cool collection that I've been to visit in the past as well. But always special to be back here and have a quick flying visit and see what's going on. Although we are now getting a little bit close to time, so we should probably swing around and head back in the right direction to make sure that we are not late. After all of this, it would be a shame if we uh, cost ourselves too much time. Turning circle in this car is great, by the way. Four wheel steering turns around like nothing. Super easy. And on we go. We're done. We've made it. Parked up at the other end of this huge adventure, as I've kept saying, we have driven a total of 1,233 kilometers. That's 766 miles. We've parked up with 65% battery remaining. Not all that bad going. We've stopped at eight different chargers along the way. And in total, by the way, drive time combined with charging time, excluding the overnight charge, has been about 15 and a half hours. But on Google Maps, it was about 13 and a half. So that's actually Actually quicker than I originally anticipated. Now that's partly down to having some good luck and not too much traffic along the way. So we've been able to make up some time on the Autobahn, but also I think just being quite efficient with the charging, stopping, being very thought out and planned with what we did with the Taycan in terms of pulling in, making the most of it, charging it from as low a percentage as possible. But I've really been intrigued to bring this car on a journey like this today to experience what it would be like. And I have to say that other than the little hiccup at the beginning, being able to charge on 100% and being able to use the rapid chargers, yes, they are quite expensive as I discussed, has actually made it really quite easy. Now there's a lot that needs to be done because you do need to put in the time to plan it. You do need to deal with some peculiar access roads to make sure you can get to the chargers, but this will evolve. As soon as there are more of them out and about and they're more accessible, it's only gonna get easier and easier. Now don't get me wrong, I would love to have had a car for this purpose with more range than this. And before you say, why didn't you buy one of those? Obviously this was not my primary purpose for the Taycan. It was to have a bit of fun. We've done some drag races with this car and of course being the turbo s it's very highly equipped and i love how it looks as well got the sport design packet and obviously we did the midnight green wrap and the gold wheels wrap at dub and the wheels at, whoops will fix it but overall that's been quite pleasant very comfortable very quiet very calm and to be honest better than expected i thought we were probably going to run into a hiccup or two along the way to be completely honest we did potentially run close to that a few scares a machine not working obviously the issue before we had even left the uk and it is basically one little problem away from complete failure we're here with enough time now but had we had one charger out of service or a massive queue that would have completely skewed the results of this very very long drive for today though and yesterday technically thank you very much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed this experience we will continue in a couple of hours time heading in the other direction to take this up some more autobahns a few stops along the way and potentially a visit to the nurburgring for my first taycan lab on the green hell also for now though that is all thank you very much for watching guys your support is hugely appreciated as always and i'll see you again very soon cheers <laughs>